Our next speaker, Kevin Mandel, Senior Manager, Technical and Operation Engagement at the Internet Society, speaking on today's topic, routing security as a norm, good manners for internet. Over to you, Kevin. Okay, thank you, uh, Melvin. Um, so thank you very much for inviting me to the um, Omren Technology Summit. Um, so I actually, it's a shame that we can't all be there in person in, in Oman. I, I was fortunate enough to be able to uh, visit the first conference about 18 months ago and toured around Oman and it's a very, very uh, beautiful place. Uh, so it's really a shame that uh, we can't do this in person, but maybe in, in a year's time, perhaps. But really, I wanted to talk about um, routing security as a norm, um, and in particular, why this is important for uh, research and education networks. So really, just to give you a, a very short overview of you know, what is routing and why is it needed. Um, so as I'm sure many of you are aware that the internet is, is actually a global system of inter interconnected computer networks that use uh, the TCP IP protocols. Um, and in fact, routing is what's needed to get the packets from one destination um, to another. Uh, so you have these specialized computing devices known as routers, um, that these discover the other networks that are connected to the internet, um, and then they're used to forward the packets uh, across the internet. Um, pretty much it's fair to say that each network is connected to the rest of the internet with a router. Um, and then, as I say, the routers are forwarded, forward the packets from up to other routers and then onwards to the final destination. Um, and that's based on uh, IP address. Usually they actually work on blocks of IP addresses. So if you're really old, you would know about class C, class B and class A, but of course it's all classless um, uh, interdomain routing these days. But specifically, um, in order to um, exchange the reachability information between themselves, um, the routers use something called Border Gateway Protocol or BGP. Uh, and from this, they, they use this to build a routing table, um, or in other words, the roadmap uh, of the internet. And just to give you an idea of scale, uh, as of yesterday, I checked the figures yesterday, um, there are just over 71,000 um, networks connected to the internet. Um, these are known as autonomous systems, um, and they're identified using a unique um, AS number. Um, there are, um, uh, getting on for now, um, 885,000 um, IP prefixes that are advertised on the internet. So in effect, these are the routes on the internet. So there's effectively, 885,000 destinations um, on the internet. That diagram on the left, so that is, a, is a an attempted mapping, um, real world mapping of the internet um, to show you all the relationships between all of the different networks. And the sort of bit in the middle, the spider's web in the middle is uh, the, the, the more or less the tier one transit providers. And then you've got the, the, the various tier two, tier three, um, edge networks out, to, as, as the name suggests, towards the edge. Um, but that, that diagram, although you can't really tell much from that diagram, it sort of gives you an idea of the complexity of the relationships between the different networks. And that's what we're interested in. So what's the problem with routing? Um, well, the, the, the main problem is that, that BGP is based entirely on verif unverified trust between the networks. Um, so there's actually no built-in validation that um, the, the, the routing updates are legitimate. Um, and the upshot is that really anybody can announce anything on the internet. Um, and one of the other problems is, is that um, although you, you can look up who is entitled to use particular resources, um, you know, that in itself has it's not entirely reliable. Um, there's some misinformation in there, there's some inaccuracies, there's some things that are not updated and there's just some things that are plain um, fake in, in the, um, the various IRRs and um, who is databases. Um, so the upshot is that, 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 that the routing system is really has been under attack for, um, for, for, for many years. And there are three main problems. Um, you have something called um, um, a route hijack. So this is where a network operator or an, or an attacker is impersonating another network operator. So in other words, they're pretending that their network is another network. Um, they can um, send out the routing announcements to this effect, um, and this can cause packets to be 
uh, forward, forwarded to the wrong place. Um, sometimes this is done deliberately for maybe censorship reasons. Other times it's done for malicious reasons. Sometimes it's to cause denial of service attacks. Um, and, and there's other whole host of other uh, reasons why this may be done. Um, so there's been a number of examples of this, uh, quite well-known examples in the past. Uh, but what we're seeing is that we actually can see this happening pretty much every day, um, every day of the year. And there's something that's also very common um, is something called a route leak, which is very similar to a route hijack, but this is more down to accidental misconfiguration. So in other words, a, 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 a provider accidentally announces that they have a path to another provider um, when um, you know, actually they shouldn't be announcing that. Um, there's a, there was actually a couple of big incidents only last year, uh, which caused um, quite significant outages um, on the internet for uh, a day or two. Um, but this can also be used for things like traffic inspection as well um, and, and traffic modification. Um, and then finally, you have IP address spoofing. So this is where someone creates a, a, an IP packet with a false source IP address, um, usually to hide the identity of the sender um, or to impersonate another computing system. And this is actually the, um, um, the root cause of many, well, even most uh, reflection distributed denial of service attacks. Um, and there was quite a famous one um, about three years ago uh, that affected Akamai, and I think it was GitHub as well. So yeah, so you'll, you'll sometimes you'll, you'll get to hear about the, the big attacks or the big route leaks um, you know, in the media, um, but um, uh, you'll, uh, we, we've been collecting statistics for this or collecting data on this. Um, and as I said, just looking at this chart for six months for a period last year, um, you, can, you can see just for hijacks alone, there were, there were hijacks happening basically every day. Um, of, uh, in that six month period. Um, so this is a real issue and you know, it's an issue of concern that we're trying to address. Okay, so what can we do to fix routing problems? Um, you know, and why is this so hard? I mean, there's been a lot of industry efforts to improve other aspects of internet security. So for example, uh, you know, the introduction of SSL and TLS to uh, improve the security of web transactions. Um, you, you, you've had the introduction of DNSSEC to essentially improve the security of DNS transactions. Um, and you can probably include DNS over TLS and things like that as well in that, in that category. Um, but really, yeah, routing security has sort of gone under the radar and, and, and why is this the case? Um, you know, the issues with routing uh, have been known for 20, 25 years, and there's been a number of um, uh, things developed in that time to eliminate most of the common problems. But the, really the problem is, has been a lack of implementation. Um, it's not that there aren't solutions out there. And part of the problem is that each network operator needs to contribute to routing security. So just implementing routing security measures by yourself don't bring immediate benefits. You need a, a certain critical mass, or if, we're topic, if, if you want to be topical, a sort of herd immunity before uh, uh, you, know, you, you see uh, some of these routing problems um, um, being addressed. And the other problem is that route incidents can be quite hard to identify, debug and fix. Um, so we actually have a, a, a tool that we, we use to, to look at some of these issues. Uh, and actually when we show even some very big network operators, you know, some of the issues that, that, that they have on the networks, um, they're really completely unaware of these. So that is obviously a clearly an issue that you have, networks have to understand they have a problem um, before they can fix it. <clears throat> so can we address this problem without you know, regulation? And I think the answer is yes. Um, you know, the internet has long been built on cooperation and common values and particular agreed practices. I mean, we all agreed to run TCP IP protocols and that helps us uh, helps the internet work. Um, and there's actually a lot of operational practices that are already accepted as, as, as standard norms. So really, why can we not have routing security as a norm? You know, we can develop a resilient and secure uh, routing system if this becomes th that the idea that this should be a common value, this should be something that all network operators are doing. If we introduce that concept, then we can reach that point where 
there is an uh, improvement of ranking security. So what specifically we need to do is really not to accept and propagate the mistakes of others. Um, and by that, we mean that we, we need to be validating what is accepted from um, our network neighbors. Um, we also need to be protecting our neighbors from our own mistakes. Um, so in other words, that we are not inadvertently or deliberately hijacking or leaking routes. Um, so really put in place uh, processes and procedures and technical solutions to um, avoid that. But then also ensure that others can validate our resources. So in other words, make sure that our AS numbers, our IP prefixes are, are registered in internet routing registries, but or even better to actually uh, implement um, RPKI. So this is where you create cryptographic verifications of your um, um, uh, internet number resources. So this is where manners comes in. This is the these are the good manners for the internet. So this is a you know a play on words. Obviously, um, it's an acronym for um, uh, uh, you know mutually agreed norms of routing security. Um, and so this really brings together all of these good practices into well-defined actions that, if they're implemented, um, can eliminate a lot of the common threats in the routing system. Um, but it's also based on collaboration between the participants um, who agree they're going to take shared responsibility for um, the internet infrastructure. So there are three programs. Um, the biggest one that we have is for network operators. But just to mention, there are other programs for um, internet exchange points and also CDN and cloud providers. Um, but in this talk, I'm going to focus on the, um, the network operators because that's what's uh, most likely to apply to um, research and education networks. So what are we trying to achieve here? Well, you know, I already mentioned that everyone will benefit from improved router security. Um, and the aim behind managers is to really encourage networks to implement these good practices that have existed for a number of years, um, but make sure that they're aware that they should be doing this. Um, and then also raise awareness with customers so that they're actually requesting that their service providers provide improved routing and security practices, because it's in their interests as well. We also want to help networks or to improve the identification of um, routing problems, um, which will help networks address those. And then also is, uh, in, increase the number of operators that are applying these routing security norms um, with the aim that there'll be fewer incidents and then they'll be less damaging when they do happen. Um, the other thing we're trying to do is also develop a, a, a sort of a history of, of routing incidents to sort of demonstrate where there are historically or where there are uh, particular problems. But we also want to check whether these uh, national security is improving or getting worse over time. I mean, hopefully we, we want to be getting it to be improving, um, but we need to have some sort of verification and measurement of that as well. But really, we're trying to build this you know, self-regulating community of really security minded operators that, that are committed to really improving um, the security of the Internet infrastructure. So. As I mentioned, we have the Network Operators Program. We have these four actions. Um, all of this is on our website, so and, and there's really quite sort of more detailed information about this. But there are four main actions. Um, one is to prevent the propagation of incorrect routing information. So this is doing route filtering to make sure that your announcements um, and the announcements that come from your customers um, are actually correct. Um, so that's the first and probably the most important action. Uh, we have another action. Um, uh, this is not compulsory at the moment, but this is encouraged. Um, it's anti-spoofing. So this is to prevent um, 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 fake IP addresses or, so, or to prevent traffic with fake IP addresses from um, leaving your network. Uh, the coordination, coordination action is very simple. That is really just simply to have up-to-date contact information in you know, relevant um, regional internet registry databases or in you can also put it into peering DB. Um, so that's really just communications. And then finally, we have global validation. So this is making sure that your internet number resources. So in other words, your, uh, um, your AS numbers and your IP prefixes, that they're all registered in either in an internet routing registry or that you've created um, um, or you've implemented RPKI for those. Um, you can do either or you can do both. That, that's fine. 
Ideally, though, we want to move towards more towards the, the, the RPKI side of things because that provides that cryptographic verification. Okay, so why, but why specifically should research and education networks join manners? Um, indeed, why should OMREN um, join manners? We'd very much like them to. Um, well, I think one of the, the, the reasons is to, to, you know, to demonstrate technical leadership and actually distinguish yourselves from commercial IXPs. Um, you know, many will say, I, I, I used to work in the NREN uh, sector for much longer than I've worked at the Internet Society, I think 25 years. Uh, you know, and and I, I, you often heard they said, well, you know, why should we fund research and education networks? Why don't we just buy our services from a commercial ISP? Well, one of the reasons is because NRENs actually don't have to, you know, they're not so bound by commercial pressures and they can adopt new technologies and new developments and they can actually, you know, lead by example. So, so that's the sort of first main reason. The second main reason is that, you know, academic institutes are generally often training the next generation of network engineers and managers. So, you know, they can provide the sort of security grounding for the next generation of people going out and building the commercial networks. Um, you know, they're doing teaching, they're doing training. So this is a really good place to be learning good practices. The other point is that NRENs or even sometimes regional uh, education networks as well, um, they're often, you know, they, they, they play an important role in the national internet communities. Um, they're generally not in direct competition with commercial XPs, and they're often involved in you know, a lot of the initiatives around developing internet exchange points or developing network operator groups. So they can play a leading role in their communities to, to implement these good practices. But then finally, it's just really to show that you, you, know, you have security proficiency and that you, you're telling your customers that you take security seriously. Um, and in fact, you know, this is a good opportunity as well to, to encourage your customers to, to um, adopt uh, th these good security practices as well. So I just wanted to really <clears throat> very quickly um, uh, mention the Manners Observatory. Um, so normally I would do a live demo, but I've only got 15 minutes. So I just have to, do, I've just got some screenshots here. But this is a tool that will actually um, uh, can demonstrate conformance of a particular networks or particular groups of networks um, with the manners actions. So here we are looking at the whole world, the whole of the internet, and you can see for each of the four manners actions, uh, you know, conformance, how the whole of the internet conforms with, with these good routing security practices. Um, the last two circles incidentally are both action four, uh, but one is the, the um, internet routing registry and the second one is RPKI implementation. So, you know, generally there's a reasonably high standard of, of, of um, implementation of routing security, good routing security, but you know, RPKI is quite, is on the low side generally, that's still in its infancy, um, um, the, the adoption of that. But then I can actually look at Oman as well. And, and this is quite encouraging because you see with Oman that, Actually, the figures are much higher. Um, you know, they're doing better. Oman is doing better for filtering. Um, it looks like all the networks have contact information. Um, pretty high. Nearly all of the number of resources are at least in a, um, a an internet routing registry. And then for RPKI, you know, it, it's about the global average, which is perhaps what you'd expect. It's not better. It's not worse. But you know, it's it's a global average. Um, I would point out that Oman probably has less. Uh, really, doesn't have any probably any transit networks. Um, so that would, you know, it's a little bit easier to, to implement good practices when you're not carrying everyone else's traffic. But, you know, I think these figures are quite positive, quite honestly. We can also look at the, the, the data for each individual network that's in Oman. I mean, this is just a snapshot, um, but you could see all of the networks that are registered in Oman. And in fact, if you go down, sort of halfway down, two thirds of the way down, you can see that OMREN is listed there. So they're AS206350. Um, and in fact, they look like they're completely manners conformant. Um, you know, they're, actually they're doing quite well in RPK as well. It's not, not 100%, but um, it, it's certainly quite high. So again, that's something quite encouraging to see. Um, and then we can look at the, you can actually look at more detail, drill into more detailed information. Um, but I'm just looking at the history here to look at, you know, for the last year. And actually, it looks like um, OMREN has had, has had no network incidents. There's been no route leaks and no hijacks 
in the past year. Um, so again, that, that's, that's kind of really positive. But this tool can actually verify that as well. So um, that, that's uh, you know, the, one of the reasons that we have this tool. So um, what have you achieved so far from Manners? Um, but at the moment, we're up to you know, sort of getting on for 600 uh, ASNs. Have 600 networks have joined. Um, sorry, 600 networks and over 700 ASNs. So some networks will have more than one ASN. Um, so that's sort of quite um, encouraging. We've seen a big rise in the last year or two, um, but we've got to put that in the context of the whatever it is, 75,000 other networks uh, that we don't have registered. Um, and then we've got a number of ICPs have joined and, and the, the CDN and Cloud program has it's, it's only really started in the past year. So that's still growing. Okay, but what's the, the upshot? Well, that, that the important thing is, you know, is this actually having an effect on routing incidents? Um, and you have to take this a little bit skeptically, this, this chart, uh, because, you know, you have to take you know, statistics with some grain of salt sometimes. But when we look at this, it does look like that as we've seen the number of Manus participants and the number of networks in adopting good routing security practices increase, uh, we have actually seen a decrease in the number of routing incidents, a quite significant decrease. So that does seem to indicate that this is having an effect on improving the, the, the security of the internet. And this is my last slide. So um, if, if, if any of this is interest, and I very much hope it is, um, please go to the Manus website. So we actually have a lot of uh, implementation information on there. Um, there's links to the, the Manus Observatory. Um, but I would actually encourage you as well to, to come and visit our virtual booth at, the, at, at this conference. Um, my colleague Hannah will be manning that. Um, and we have a number of uh, you know, useful resources that, that can help, um, um, help, help implement these um, uh, routing actions. But yeah, please get involved. Um, you know, implement these actions in your own networks, um, but also help promote and support um, good routing security practices as well. So that's my, uh, brings me to the end of this talk. Um, and I will hand over if there's any questions. Kevin, thank you for your presentation. Uh, yes, the attendees can uh, visit your booth for more information and questions to be asked. Uh, one question uh, which has come is, um, is Internet Society right now working in the Middle East or GCC countries at the moment? So uh, yes, we have. Uh, we actually have some Middle East um, initiatives. Um, my, I, I was actually the technical person for this uh, for a while uh, until we recruited Hannah, my colleague Hannah. But my colleague Hannah is uh, is working specifically on um, uh, initiatives for the Middle East. Um, some of these, you know, are also similar to what we do globally. Uh, but we also have some Pacific, re well, region Pacific um, activities as well. Uh, but one thing that we are very keen on is pushing um, research and education networks and good practices there as well. So that, that's just one thing that we have very Pacific to, to the Middle East region. Perfect, Kevin. Thank you very much for your time and presentation. And yes, hope to meet you next year in Oman again for this event. And I'll take you around. Don't worry about it. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you, Kevin. See you. Bye-bye.